Eyes on Longmont, offering a diversity of topics about our community that will inform and entertain you. We invite you to sit back and enjoy this edition of Eyes on Longmont. born in Buffalo, New York, and um, that's where I started to draw and paint, and I think a lot had to do with the winters. I would stay in a lot and just paint and draw. And then in high school, I took a darkroom class, and it excited me a lot, so I started to create my own images in the darkroom, although I had a camera first when I was eight or nine years old. and. Um, when I went to college, I went to FIT in New York and I studied interior design and got a degree in design. And I worked for about 20 years in an architectural office as an interior design, architectural designer and project manager. And while I worked full time, I also had a darkroom in my home, in my apartment, and I would make jewelry or do my darkroom work uh, as relaxation. And um, I started showing my work probably in, uh, I would say the 80s. I would show in different venues in New York. And then um, in 1990, I was full time into photography. And what I would do is have my work in galleries. I did um, portraiture. I shot models and babies and families and mostly black and white. Many times I would hand color the portraits that I did. I also did home portraits for people out on, in South Hamptons where I would shoot with infrared and actually do a painting of their home. Um, then I was also creating jewelry and selling to crystal healing shops in Manhattan. And then 9-11 came and my husband was down at ground zero and things in New York changed drastically. So he lost his job. He worked on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange and he was a member of the New York Stock Exchange. And um, so when he could no longer work, I needed an income and gallery work was not going to do it so I opened a gallery with a friend of mine in Manhattan and we ran that for two years and eventually my husband and I sold our house on Long Island and we got in the car and drove for a year and ended up in Tucson and during that year I saw a lot of things happening around the country which really upset me. and mainly regarding trees because I photographed trees for many years and I love trees and when I saw what was happening to them I felt that I needed to do something and when I settled in Tucson, Arizona I decided the thing that I needed to do was to write a book. I spent a lot of time putting together my photographs to create this book and in Tucson I also showed my work a lot and um, I was in a collective with six other artists and um, every summer it was so hot we would come to Boulder to see our kids and our grandchildren and so eventually after seven years of being in Tucson we decided well why don't we just move to Boulder so two years ago that's what we did 
we moved to Boulder and so this is all kind of new to me and right now I am showing my work in various small venues and looking for another place to present my work and mainly my book is what I've been spending time marketing. So this is my new book that just came out this the end of this summer and it's Tree Speak, Healing Ourselves and Our Planet. And I was driven to create this book because of the trip that I took for a year in the car where we ended up going from New York to Tucson, Arizona. And during that trip, I saw what people were doing to trees and it really upset me a lot. So I took my images and uh, my tree images and throughout the book, I have full color images on every page and mainly I want to tell people how important trees are and build an awareness for what these trees do. So I start out with the biggest and oldest trees on the planet and in fact the, the tree, the ancient bristlecone pine. and. I then go through all of the benefits of trees to us, and we all know about oxygen, but there's so many other things that trees do. They filter the air, they filter the water, they can actually take chemicals out of the water. So I feel like the um, trees are trying to help us have a healthier environment, and we just keep dumping more chemicals into the environment. We get fire from trees, and we get shade from trees and fruit and nuts and animals homes from trees so they're so important and then i have a chapter about poetry and it's poetry written by very famous artists and writers like john muir and henry david thoreau rachel carson carlson and then i also talk about trees that are in city environments so Basically, we have trees that are all around us, and many times we don't even pay attention to them, but they add beauty and shade and beautiful energy to our living environment. And then I talk a bit about what we're doing and what nature's doing, but the destruction of trees. And um, I think more and more people are starting to become aware of how much clear cutting and fires that take the lives of trees and all the beetles and paper use and things that we're using the, the trees up at an alarming rate. So eventually what I get to is what we can do to save the trees and I have a chapter on how we can help the trees by planting them, taking care of them, building around them instead of chopping them down. And the final chapter is visualizing a greener planet. And this is probably the most important chapter in the book. And it really discusses the fact that even though we want to take care of trees, trees are part of the whole ecosystem. And we need to change the way we're living and think about the things that we're purchasing, the things that we eat, the way we use water, the way we use paper. Uh, all of these things are covered. It's about farming techniques and plastics and and it's mainly to have young people possibly think about new fresh ways to do things to create uh, a sustainable way to live and I want young people also to realize that it's not necessarily the end for us but we need to it could be the end as we know it in other words the way we're living is not sustainable but if we change the way we're living I think there's a lot of hope for a beautiful tomorrow. I appreciate you taking the time to find out about my new book. If you'd like further information, please go to my website at treespeak.com. That's T-R-E-E-S-S-P-E-A-K. There you'll be able to purchase the book as a hard copy. If you're interested in a Kindle version, you can go to Amazon and the book is available there. Well, thank you again, and I appreciate your time.